Does CS2 actually have an input lag problem compared to CSGO? Well, we are going to find out. So what we are doing is testing end-to-end -end latency, meaning the delay between your mouse button being triggered and a flash happening on your screen. And the tool that we are using is NVIDIA's LDAT. The testing setup that I have is fairly good. I have the PG27AQN, which is a 360Hz monitor, the 5900X, a 3080, and a fairly well optimized Windows 11 install. And in both CSGO and CS2, we are running everything on low or disabled. So let's go check out some results. And as an example, with the LDAT application, I have 9 milliseconds of end-to-end -end latency. With CSGO and 128 tick, I have 11.1 .1 milliseconds. And then again, CSGO with 64 tick, I have 15.8 milliseconds. So tick rate definitely matters in how responsive the game feels for you. When we compare CSGO at 64 tick to CS2, we get somewhat similar results. But for example, with the CS2 and Reflex off, the difference is only 1.4 milliseconds. So it's definitely not something you would feel. If you look at other CS2 settings, the Reflex Plus Boost mode gives 18.5 milliseconds and the Reflex Enabled mode gives 19.5 milliseconds. But the thing is that these results actually fall into run-to-run -run variation levels. For example, I ran three more iterations with the Reflex disabled and I got 16.6, 18.2 and 18.9 milliseconds of end-to-end -end latency. So the results are all over the place and the setting does not seem to have meaningful difference. The thing that is a little bit alarming with CS2 compared to CSGO is the amount of variance in these results. With CSGO I would almost always get 14 to 17 milliseconds of end-to-end -end latency. But with CS2 I get all the way from 16 milliseconds to 23 milliseconds depending on the day and the run. So there is a lot of inconsistency and that shows in the min and max values that I get from these runs as well. It also seems that these averages above 20 milliseconds are more common with the reflex enabled and reflex enabled plus boost settings. It's rare that I get these when I have the setting disabled so I'm for sure running the reflex disabled for now. I'm of course only testing end-to-end -end latency at the moment and that is the main point of this video. And if you want your CS2 to feel more responsive, you're much better off optimizing your Windows install than managing your CS2 settings. On a completely default Windows 11 install, I had 15 milliseconds of end-to-end -end latency. And as I showed you before, I managed to get it down to 9 milliseconds. You can basically do all the optimizations yourself. These are not very hard. You just need to follow a few guides and you can get very far. But if you do not have the time, if you do not have the interest, you can always use an optimizer. I can recommend Frequency as he has done things for me in the past when I did not have the time or the interest to learn things myself. But I wouldn't recommend for you to use money or time at the moment for CS2 purposes for getting higher FPS or anything because the game is not very optimized at the moment. The conclusion from me is that CS2 does feel less responsive than CSGO does at 128 tick for sure. But it has other issues as well that I consider more critical at the moment. And if you are used to playing CSGO at 64 tick, playing CS2 will not be an issue at all. And the two games should feel pretty much just as responsive for you. That's basically it for this video. More optimizations will come for CS2 and I will most likely make another video or maybe just post the results on Twitter, depending on how lazy I am at the time. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one.